also will be friends and family support. Today I want to talk to you about the support that I had from uh, my friends and my family. Um, initially getting this diagnose, uh, I had so much support. Um, like I told you before that I went to my job and my co-workers, which I call my family at that time um, at Elena Life, because I'm now at a different they are the most amazing people. Um, they wrapped their arms around me. They loved on me. Um, people showed me so much support. Um, of course, you do have those who uh, I, I thought would be there for me. Um, that I really called close and they weren't. Strangers <laughs> that showed me a lot of support. I also remember one time um, a high school when I had one of my surgeries. One of my high school uh, friends, I could not remember her for the life of me. She walked in my hospital room and brought flowers and supported me. And those are the type of things that really made me um, just so happy. Now, I have people that were there for me from the beginning. My husband is amazing. Um, I don't want to say this about the husband. All the husbands or boyfriends and all whoever, if your wife or girlfriend is diagnosed, I know you feel helpless. I know you don't know what to do. But doing nothing is worse. When you step up to the plate, it means so much. Find out what it is that they need. Talk, have a conversation. Some people don't want to talk. Some people don't want to be bothered. Some people need people around them. I was a little needy. <laughs> I was needy. I needed people around me because when people were around me, it kept my mind off of it. It kept me okay. And I think that was one of the best things about this is that I saw the love, you know. I saw the love of my family. I saw the love of my friends. I saw the love of strangers. Like, there was so much support. Um, I was running out of hours at work with my sick time and stuff. And my coworkers, they did everything they could. Vicki Robertson is her name. She actually went and did all the footwork for me because I couldn't do it. Because there's different things in this journey that you just cannot do. And there are people that's going to do just what you need. If you allow them. Some people don't want it. Some people don't even want you to know that they got it. And that's how they deal with it. And I had to learn to respect that because I was a different creature. I am one that wanted the help. I am the one that don't tell me that you'll be there for me if there's anything I need because I will pick up the phone and I will call you. <laughs> I had no shame in it <laughs> because I, I know that I needed the help. And there's and for me, it, it was no time to be superwoman. It was time to, you know, reflect. And, you know, uh, I have good friends, good, good friends. Uh, I remember um, Tina, actually, her name is actually Drayton Maddox, and she's a nurse. And I remember when I told her, she's like, okay, well, what do we need to do? I mean, like, hands on day one. Like, I was like, okay. And I will remember that my first chemo, I was supposed to do all these pills at a certain time, at a certain this, and only this pill on this day, this pill. And I didn't know what to I, er, I messed up everything. I took the wrong pills at the wrong time. And, you know, my first chemo was only supposed to be, I think, four or five hours. And it ended up being eight hours because it had a counteractive medicine that I took wrong to flush that out and then give me the chemos that I need. 
And I remember Tina was like, you guys don't have to stay, whatever. She said, I'm here for the long haul. I'm here, whatever, whatever. It doesn't matter. And I was like, that that just did something to me on the inside. It really, it really did something to me on the inside. And so I tried to make a list of uh, who can go with me at certain times and you know, cause I didn't want to overtax anyone. Uh, cause, I, but I did not want to be alone. This is pre-COVID, so you know, people could go in. But it was supposed to be only two people at a time, and literally, I had sometimes five people with me, um, five or six. And um, I remember put, making this this list up, and I said, "Well, Tina, can you come for like 30 minutes this day, and and I'll get Greg 30 minutes this day, and you know, I was trying to." not overtax people and she's like I'm here for the whole four hours and I was like wow and she only missed one so that alone just blessed my soul it really did bless my soul my um husband it was so funny let me tell y'all this this was so funny that man was so nervous he didn't know what to do uh <laughs> Tina sent him to go get a board because we made a board and it was <laughs> we wrote a board and made fun of it and you know put my chemos on it and all that the countdown so it was a, a creative thing that uh Draytana uh, thought of she sent him out to the store to go get it because he was so nervous he didn't know what to do he just felt helpless because he saw these needles in my hands and my arms and he didn't know what to do and sending him away actually calmed him <laughs> I mean he's, he went to other ones but you know that that was a lot for him and being um, after my first chemo, I think it was, because I had six rounds of chemo. And know your chemos. I had to learn that. When you're going through chemo, don't just say you got chemo, because there's different types of chemos. Like I had Progetta, Herceptin, Carpitol, and tax, Taxitol, not tax, Taxier, Taxier. So I had four chemos that I had to take. Um, so that's something that you should also know any pill that you take you, you need to know that but getting back to um my husband after my first chemo i was very sick i was so sick and literally um i was throwing up and using the restroom at the same time and i was so dizzy and so heavy and when i got up i just completely fell and i just remember him screaming to that to that i'm like I'm not dead. <laughs> I'm not dead. But I was so weak that I couldn't even talk. I was so in, you know, so heavy. It just felt like I was just heavy and I couldn't lift myself up. And I remember him lifting me up and putting me in the bed. And, you know, uh, you know, we dealt with it. My second and my third chemo was pretty okay, you know. Uh, my kids, they come and they support me. I had friends that came and supported me. And, you know, Vicki and Tim, they came, you know. I had so many people come to my chemo that the lady was like, there's too many people in here. That little blonde lady, I don't know who she is, but she, I didn't like her. She gave my nerves. But I had so much friends and family support. The support was amazing. Like, I remember walking into a uh, Walmart and let me backtrack. So I had did my whole journey on Facebook and that was unintentional because I was just sitting in my bus at the time and I just wanted to talk. I just wanted to talk. That was therapeutic for me. And I had no, I recorded it, but I had no intentions on putting it on Facebook. And I said, oh, let me just put it on there. And I think I did it like the next day or something, like not, maybe a few hours later or the next day. And I remember getting so much response. I'm like, whoa, I wasn't expecting that, you know. Um, I'm, I love you. I'm praying for you. You know, you got this, you know, just so much support. So coming back forth, I saw a lady in, um, in Walmart and she was like, dude. I had no idea who this lady is. She said, I know you don't know me, but I saw your video and I just want you to know that I am praying for you. And that just touched my heart. Like, to get that level of love and support, it meant everything. Everything. 
my kid, I can't tell you how much um, they supported me. My son-in-law, he was amazing. He was amazing. I found a new respect for him. Um, I just, and he came from a family that was not close. And for him to gravitate to me and my illness and take care of me the way that he did touched my heart. My oldest daughter, she was always there. She came to my chemotherapies. Uh, you know, they. I had to realize that my family had lives that they had to take care of too. Their life didn't stop because I had cancer. So I couldn't expect them to come to everything and they didn't and that's okay. You know, I they called me, they checked on me, that's fine. Um, friends, they called, they check on me. My church alone was amazing. Like uh, they uh, lent me a hospital bed because I couldn't lift up. It, you know, it was just so many aspects of the friends and family and love support. My WHS, Washington. <laughs> my general, I mean, oh my God. They supported me, calling me and loving on me. So if you want that support, it's available to you. Um, some people don't want it. Some people want to hide and close, and you have to learn to respect that. But I just want to tell you, I appreciate you and every one of you that loved up on me and helped me through this process and this support, and this is my truth. Okay, let's do it one more time. Because you stumbled a little bit. Oh my God. <laughs> I'm trying to remember what to say. I thought I did good. God have mercy. Okay, so say it again now. Okay. Hi, love. Welcome to the Truth Corner. Welcome to Truth Corner. Today's episode is. See, you need to have something behind you where I can read. I know, tell us something. I do. I'm working on it. I'm working on it. Girl, you can have a board back there when I'm Copy it. Huh. Oh. <laughs> Today's episode will be <laughs> It's okay. It's okay. We love bloopers. And I haven't put bloopers on Truth Corner. I think I'm going to start putting bloopers on Truth Corner now. Today's episode is family and friend support. Family and friend support.